Okay, we now turn into the case with where you have duplication. So think about the following example. If we have y double prime minus 4y minus 12y equals to 5e to the negative 2x. Suppose this is the differential equation we want to. Uh, we casually start out by saying, I want my particular to look like this one. Okay, e to the negative 2x. Now, if its derivative creates any other functions, then we should also include it. But the derivative of e to the negative 2x is negative 2 times e to the negative 2x, so it's the same thing. So it's, the derivative is always a multiple of itself, so we don't create anything new when you differentiate. So this is the only function you need inside the, uh, the particular. And then once you pick your functions, what do you do? You make the coefficient undetermined, right? You, you need to put this undetermined coefficient. That's why it's called the method of undetermined coefficient. But then, I told you to also find yc before you proceed to calculate this. Now, let's see why. Now, for this one, the characteristic equation is r squared minus 4r minus 12 equal to 0, which factors as L r minus 6 and r plus 2. So that r is equal to 6 and negative 2. So you have two solutions, 6 and negative 2. And that gives you a com complementary solution as c1 times e2y. 6x. Six. Six six. And then c2 times e to the? Negative 2x. Two negative 2x. Two okay. Now here's the question. After getting your yc, you should check for duplication. Is any of the functions in your particular duplicated in the complementary? Yes. Yes, yes. right? Yeah e to the negative 2x, you see, here it is here too. Okay. Now, let me see what this is really saying. It's saying that if I plug this function on the left side, what are you supposed to create? Zero. Zero, because it's, it's, this, this entire thing is for the, com the complementary differential equation, which is the homogeneous case. See, this is the solution for this equation, which is which the right side is equal to zero. So if I plug this on the left side, you're going to get zero. zero, which is exactly what you will get if you plug in here. See, if you, if you differentiate this twice and you plug into the left side, because this is one of the complementary, it's going to produce zero. So it will fail to create the right side. So that, that's why duplication is important. If it's duplicated, you know that there's no hope for this creating the right side because before it reaches the right side, it just gets killed during this turmoil. Okay? I mean, this is a very complicated calculation. And after all this calculation, sometimes you'll lose your function. and It just dies before it reaches the right side. Okay? All right, so that means we somehow have to make this stronger so that it survives this horrible, horrible calculation. Okay. And that's, that's, our, that's, that's, our, that's the main idea. How do you make this function stronger against all these differential operators? Any ideas? Yeah, it's our thing, um, maybe make like the a squared. A squared will be just another constant, so it's not going to help. You said add a term, add. but add what kind of term? X. A B. Add an x. An extra x. If you add an extra x, then x double prime will be 0. This will be 1. It's going to create some polynomial extra. So is that, that good? Huh? Is that good? I want it to match this right side. So if it produces something totally different, then that's not good. Then it would be e to the 6x. No, here's what we're trying to do. I want something like this. Because if you plug this into something like this, it's, it has a high chance to produce something like the right side. Yes? What about multiplying by x? Very good. And actually, that's the right answer. You multiply by x. If you do that, then somehow the right amount of the things will cancel away. And then the survivor 
will look like sum multiple of e to the negative two x. Didn't Bryce just say that? No, you said add. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like add it in there, like put it there. Oh, adding as like putting extra Not things like, in there. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I I, I thought add yeah, means cool. literally add. It's, yeah. <laughs> so you have to be more more specific about what you mean by by that. Okay. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Add in mathematics means plus, right? So it's ambiguous when you said that. Yeah. And of course, I would misunderstand you to the, the worst case. Yeah. Because yeah. I like to. All right. So, so you have yp as this. So let's differentiate. How do we just know to add yeah. x to Oh, yeah. so, so we, we don't know. It's just from our experience, and it, it will always work. Okay. So, so when we have a duplication, add x? Not add an x. Multiply, multiply an x, multiply. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put some extra x. Yeah. Okay. It's just like uh, uh, you're trying to make this function stronger by uh, adding extra power. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry, multiplying extra power. Don't say add. Add is dangerous again. So we, we, we multiply by x, and you, you know what? Sometimes even multiplying by x would would not do it because I mean you know sometimes uh, you can think of another different equation where you have not only this but x times e to the negative two x, right? In that yeah. case, you would need to make it extra stronger, make it x squared times e to the negative two. So you just have to make it like one power more than what's in the yeah. Velocity. So you you keep multiplying by x until you, you escape the duplication. That, that's basically the idea. Yeah. You know to do that if it comes out to be zero? Is that you know? Or how do you know when? when yeah, I mean, you, you try it, and if it comes out to be zero, then you multiply by x. But that would be like wasting your time. Why do that when you can just do this and find, awesome. find that immediately by looking at the complementary that it's going to fail? If it fails, you multiply by x. So that's the idea, right? Okay, now I, I still haven't done this. Uh, derivative is ax times this prime. So if to differentiate one by one, dif this differentiates to this, whereas this one, negative two comes front, and you get negative two ax e to the negative two x. And then, so, um, so that's point P prime. Yeah. Well, you got that zero before, so that tells you that there's a duplicate in the in the thing, or. So so, all right. So I gave you time to actually try the one without the x, and you plugged in, you got the zero. Right. That's how you knew it failed, right? But that's not being smart. To be to be smart about this is to to hold it. Don't plug it in yet. Find the complementary and check for duplication. If there's duplication, then that's a sign that it's not going to work, right? But did and it already not work if there was a zero? Yeah. No, this, this one is what we call the complementary solution. Oh, okay. We always solve the complementary solution regardless of whether you have duplication or not. You always do that, okay? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you have to add the complementary solution to the particular solution to get the general solution, right? Okay. So we have this. If you differentiate one more time, you get negative two a, either negative two x, and then you will be having the same thing with negative two multiplied. So it'd be negative two a, either negative two x, plus four a x. Okay. So I, since we are running out of time, I kind of cut corners here. Uh, I kind of did some of the calculations in my head, but th this is what you're going to get. So you're going to get negative 4a e to the negative 2x plus 4a x e to the negative 2x. All right, so we have uh, y, yp prime, yp double prime, and now we have to plug that into the left side, which was y double prime minus 4y prime plus 12, sorry, minus 12 y, right? 
Okay, so now let's compute. This is negative 4a e to the negative 2x plus 4a x e to the negative 2x. Minus 4 times y p prime, that's 8 times e to the negative 2x minus 2ax e to the negative 2x. And then finally, minus 12 and yp is ax e to the negative 2x. And we have, we need this to equal to 5 times e to the negative 2x, right? Okay, <laughs> let's organize term by term. We have negative 4a, let, let's collect all the e to the negative 2x's. So we have negative 4a here. We have another negative 4a here. Okay, and then there's nothing there. Okay, so that's, that's all we have. How about x times e to the negative 2x? For that, we have 4a from the first one. We have plus 8a in the second one. In the third one, we have negative 12a. We have this. Now let's see what we need this to be. This should be what? 5. 5. I need this to equal to 5. And what should this be? 0. 0. Isn't it already 0? If it's if it matches 5 and 0, then it does put match with the right side, which is 5 times e to the negative 2x. And you're right, this is already 0. And that's good for us, because if this was not 0, then we would be in trouble, because we have just a single unknown a, and if, if two, we had two different equations, then we would have an overdetermined linear system. That's not good. So this is already 0. 4a plus 8a is 12a. 12a minus 12a is 0. So that's already satisfied. The only thing that we need to satisfy is now that negative 8a, which is this one, negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8a, should equal to 5, giving you that a is negative 5 over 8. And therefore, what's your yp? Negative 5 over 8 x times e to the negative 2x. And then, finally, your differential, uh, the general solution to the differential equation is the complementary solution plus that one particular solution. That's how you solve the duplicate. Now, sometimes, yeah, sometimes this calculation takes so long that uh, instead of giving you the question of finding the particular, I might just tell you to, to check the duplication and write down the appropriate form of the particular score. So let, let me do that. Next example. Uh, find the appropriate form of yp for y double prime uh, plus let's see, 4y prime plus 13y equal to e to the negative 2x sine 3x, let's just put something here, let's say 7, and then plus uh, e to the negative 2x. So let me solve this quickly. Uh, let, let's do the yc first, because we, we have to check duplication. So r squared plus 4r plus 13 equal to 0. That's, that's a characteristic equation for the homogeneous one. r plus 2 squared 
plus 9 equal to 0. And you get plus minus 3i because negative 9, and then you take the square root, that's what you're going to get, which gives you r equals to negative 2 plus minus 3i. Sorry for doing this calculation really quickly, but given the time, that's, that will be a very easy thing to get. Okay, what does that mean for the complement 3? e to the negative 2x, c1, cosine 3x, plus c2, sine 3x. That's what it means. That's the complement. Okay, so put this aside. Now we have to figure out what for what to do for yp. First, e to the negative two x sine three x. So that should be in here. A times e to the negative two x sine three x. Now is this duplicated? Yeah, it's here, right? So we have to multiply by x later. Okay. But before that, let, let, let's uh, let's first uh, write down the appropriate forms. So I need this, but then what do you do? You have to differentiate this, right? If you differentiate this, what kind of function would you get? You'll get the same function when you differentiate this one. It will only be changes in the constant. But you, you would also differentiate sine 3x when you do the product rule, right? Which will give you the cosine 3x. So that will require another cosine 3x. And yet again, this is duplicated, so that will require multiplication by x later. Okay. Uh, how about this one? What do you need to put to create that? That's it. Uh, if you differentiate, you get the same function. So you need these, but among these three terms, which ones are duplicated? This one and that one. So for the duplicated ones, you want them to survive this turmoil on the left side, so you ex add extra power, and you put the x is here. And that's how you make it work. Okay? All right. Wait, where would you put the x's? 